So chef, there is lots of buzz happening around experience, luxury dining, you know, friends coming in as a, you know, vegan. So do you really think that, you know, uh, India, Indian restaurants and, in, you know, Indian food service market is really ready to go with the trend? And, you know, according to you, what trends do you see? Because Olive, you know, being one of the first restaurant group to, you know, start the luxury dining or fine dining trend in India. So, you know, coming from you, you know, as an expert, what do you think, actually, in terms of trend? Well, the good thing about any growing market is that, um, and especially a young market like India, you have to realize that, you know, a majority of our population is under the age of 25. So we have a large, very, very large young market. And they do like new trendy stuff. Also, access has become huge. If you look at the... Uh, smartphone penetration in this country, it's phenomenal and it's only growing from there. So the way people absorb uh, trends and information is so much faster than it used to be. And that is what a lot of people's uh, business models are uh, riding on the back of. So when you have a scenario like that, it's an ideal time to do things that resonate with the rele relevant audiences uh, immediately. And so much of the QSR boom that you're seeing in the market is also driven in large part by that. And it's easier then to create new concepts and new ideas and float them. Um, and this is true for across the board. It's not only true of the young set, but the same means of absorbing information also exists in everybody's hands now. So we have a lot more access as people today, as a country today. and the restaurant business is only going to get stronger using that technology or using that access uh, to reach out to people. Technology has, you know, played a vital role, but when it comes to, you know, Indian restaurants, we see that, you know, there are restaurants who are actually at par with the experiences and the luxury dining. But when uh, there are restaurants uh, who are, uh, you know, who really are talking about experience, but uh, a customer is not happy going uh, to such restaurants and they're a big time failure. So, you know, uh, what, what advice, being an expert, you would give to the restaurants who are really talking about experience, but when it comes to delivering, they are not delivering the experience. Because, you know, daily being one such market, we see restaurants, you know, uh, where the, ex yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, see, you have to be grounded in quality. It, I mean, how else is it going to work? Uh, if you go to a doctor and you're not happy with what happens as an outcome, you probably will not go back and you go for a second opinion. We all do that. Uh, if you go and watch the movie of a particular actor and actress and you don't like the performance at all, there's no reason you're going to go back for a next movie which has that person starring. And that is a consumer choice at the end of the day. If the consumer is unhappy with the experience that a certain establishment is providing them, or they don't believe in that product, there's nothing in the world that can make it succeed. Um, luck maybe, but not the product itself. And yes, people want to go to new places, people want to be seen at new places. There is an aspirational value for being the first person... <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> for being the first person at anything. And the same thing that I said earlier, access is doing that. If you see when a new iPhone is launched, everybody's standing in line, I want to be the first one to have the new iPhone, I, you know, I want to flash that. There is a massive aspirational value associated with being the first in anything and that's why a lot of the new restaurants have this initial three month four month five month honeymoon period where everyone's coming there to be the first people to experience it and talk about it after that it is the product that needs to run the place through so whoever is opening the restaurant cannot be disconnected with the quality or the qualitative delivery of the product it might happen that people will come for the first six months and then it'll suddenly slow down for the next six months. But if you believe that you're offering great quality, then stick to your guns and continue delivering that because that's essentially what's going to make it succeed at the end. So, you know, what are those three things that you stick to, you know, at your restaurant because you're running a fabulous concept like Toast and Tonic, Fatty Bao and Olive Group as a whole. I think all restaurants are fabulous. So what are those three things which you think you are, you know, which are letting your customers coming in regularly? Well, I think for us the three touchstones, uh, the, the cornerstones of uh, great restaurants is going to be 
food service and ambience and uh, we pretty much get it right on all three fronts and that's really what makes our products work and last and, and we're always focused on the fact that uh, food needs to be extremely important in in how uh, our brands are created the brand stories are created uh, we've just opened a goan uh, restaurant called lady baga is the third outlet um, we have one in Delhi, one in Bombay, and uh, one in Bangalore. So we're taking that Goan story and bringing it to the rest of the country. Soda um, bottle opener wala took the Irani cafe concept, the par, you know the Parsi and the Irani concept, and made it accessible to the rest of the country in really fun environments with great service, a great vibe, a great buzz. Uh, Guppy by Eye does it with Japanese, Fatty does it with uh, Asian, Monkey Bar took regional influences from across the country and put them onto a menu where people could experience a pub uh, vibe and great food which didn't always go in hand in hand so it's very it's important for us to constantly create great new concepts which resonate with clients and they appreciate the fact that there is qualitative delivery in it that's what keeps bringing them back it comes to you know seeing trends since uh, you know uh, Olive is doing lots of concept based restaurant Riaz is coming with lots of concept based restaurant Zurawar has created restaurants. So do you really think that as a trend concept, restaurants are going to rock in the country or I'm not sure I quite understand what a concept restaurant is. For me, every restaurant is a concept restaurant. I mean, it's a concept that you created. Yeah, but there's something called Jailer's Cafe or Kaidi Cafe, etc. That's also a concept restaurant where you have an experience of trying to eat in a jail setting. So, is that a concept restaurant where there's a particular theme and it's thematic? Then for me, that's a thematic restaurant, not a concept restaurant. Every restaurant is a concept restaurant, in my opinion. It's what concept you as a restaurant want to put out there. So I think that's a little confusing, but honestly, you know what people are going to keep coming back for. Yeah, you know, there's so many gorgeous restaurants on the coast in Amalfi and in Italy and in Greece, which run, <coughs> and in Goa, which run not because they're great concepts, because they're sitting on a beach. And everyone who comes to that state wants to sit on the beach and take in the beautiful sunset and that lovely view. So is it a concept restaurant that's sitting on the beachfront? Or is it the beachfront that's selling the restaurant for you? Net net, if you can take that same concept and put it in the middle of uh, Rajori, Rajori Garden in Delhi and make it successful, then you have a good concept. You can't only rely on the beach. So, you know, going forward, you know, what trends we see happening in, you know, Indian food service market as a whole and, you know, coming from the concept. I think going forward, the most exciting thing in the Indian food service market is going to be that we've started celebrating Indian food again. And it's not only about North Indian food. It's not only about dal makhani and butter naan. It's not only about butter chicken and, uh, uh, you know, paratha. It's a lot more than that. Bori food is becoming big in Bombay, for example. Everyone's talking about bori food and how amazing it is so there's so many subcultures within singular cuisines in this country that that needs to be explored and a lot of entrepreneurs and young chefs are now stepping up and trying to create restaurants that explore that that's a great concept that's a concept restaurant in my opinion and I think that's going to be a fantastic trend to watch out for I'd love to see what surti food is all about you know traditional surti food that as a cafe format across the country is going to be fantastic Marwadi food or a Mewadi cuisine restaurant may be fantastic I met a friend of mine Ajay Chopra yesterday is also a, you know a well-known chef and he's on TV etc and he was saying that he's uh, created a Mar Marwadi and Mewadi restaurant in uh, in Jaipur uh, and and the nuances that he was talking about in the cuisine were fantastic but I'm so happy to see that more and more people are now trying to embrace what is theirs and their own intrinsically rather than looking outward and saying I need to take that cuisine and make it popular in India.